Hello and welcome to iBasiac, YouTube's channel for all your vacuum cleaner news, views and reviews. Well, today we're going to be looking at this Hoover Blaze bagless upright vacuum cleaner. I'm going to be putting it through its paces, going to be throwing loads of dirt down and seeing how effective this machine is on carpets and hard floors. I'm also going to be testing out the cleaning tools and we'll see if the Hoover Blaze will reach up a standard flight of stairs. Before we get to the performance demonstrations, I thought I'd take you on a guided tour of the machine and point out the main features and functions of this Hoover Blaze bagless upright. This is the main cleaning head, the bit that does all the work on your carpets and hard floors. And you'll notice a dial here. This is your height control that raises or lowers the brush according to the height of carpet or the floor that you're cleaning. Now, according to the instruction book, Hoover suggests you use the machine on setting 1. This is with the brush at its lowest position. This will give you the best performance on low pile carpets and most hard floors. If however you've got delicate floors such as um, cushion vinyl, Hoover suggests using setting 2. Also if you find the machine hard to push on either setting 1 or 2, if you've got a deeper pile carpet you can of course raise the height, there's setting 3 there, setting 4, or to raise the brush to its highest extent you want it on setting 5. That's the setting you'd also select when you're using the cleaning tools. Looking at the back of the cleaner you've got two foot operated pedals. This side releases the handle to the operating position and the other pedal turns the machine on and off. Moving further up the machine we have the onboard hose stored on the back of the cleaner. We also have this dual purpose nozzle. It's a brush nozzle and you can slide the brush off for doing your upholstery and curtains. You also have a long extension tube on the side of the machine and inside that tube you find an extra long crevice tool. The other cleaning tool you get supplied with standard on this particular model is the pet hair remover. This has a rotating brush underneath powered by the suction of the cleaner. This is ideal if you've got pet hairs you need to remove for your, from your stairs, furnishings or pet bedding. I'll be demonstrating this nozzle later on in the video. To remove the bagless container for emptying there is a little blue switch just positioned here. Now it's a little hard to access because of the storage of the turbo nozzle so if you find it easier remove the turbo nozzle and then of course you can see the button marked bin release. Just press that and then lift the bin away. Once you've taken your bin outside to empty you just need to push this little release lever at the bottom of the bin and all the dirt should fall out of the bottom. As with most bagless cleaners you do have to perform some simple maintenance tasks in order to keep the machine operating efficiently. The Hoover Blaze has two filters that do require cleaning from time to time. The exhaust filter is located on the machine itself, just behind this silver grill. So you just remove that by pressing down on this catch. And then inside here you'll find a black filter. Rinse that under running water, let it dry, and then you can put it back in the machine. If you want it to dry a bit quicker, put it in between two towels, press it, and then leave it in a warm place but not in any direct light, sunlight or over any direct heat source. Just let it dry naturally. Once it's dry you can put it back in the filter cage there and then it just pops back on the machine just like that. The other filter that will require cleaning from time to time is actually located in the dust container itself. To access the filter, if you notice on the back of the container we have a little symbol that says open and lock. Just turn the top of the container, the lid, to the open position and then you can remove the whole filter unit. At this stage you can give the bin a wipe out if you want to and then you'll see the pleated filter which you remove by twisting at the bottom. Now it's had some use this machine, not much, so there's a little bit of dirt already built up so you can give that a wipe over. There's a little sort of very coarse mesh filter. Give that a rinse underwater, leave it to dry and then that can go back in there. And then you have this filter, again it's a bit of dirt on it. 
when you've been using your machine for a while there'll be a lot more dirt on this I've just basically run this machine for a couple of seconds just to, to check it out so it's, it's already gathered some dirt on the filter there's a mesh screen which does come away a little bit stiff though because it's more or less a brand new unit let's just get that off so you can clean that under running water and then leave that to dry and then the same goes for this HEPA pleated filter clean it under running water shake it vigorously and then leave it to dry for at least 24 hours you don't have to wash them every time but I do suggest every few bin emptyings you do take this filter out and you tap it on the side of say your dustbin to release any dust that's actually stuck to the filter when you've done all that you need to put the mesh screen back over the pleated HEPA filter it's important you do that because the mesh screen does help stop some particles from adhering to the filter mainly traps the likes of uh, dog hairs and fibres and things so that's clean and dry then you can just pop it back in the top of the unit twist it until it locks there's a little catch here that stops you using the machine without the filter in place so if you try and put the lid on the bin without the filter it won't actually let you that little catch stops you so you do need to always have the filter in place then when you've cleaned the filter pop the lid back on the bin line up the handles we've got it lined up to open and just click it to lock and then you can pop it back on the cleaner Okay, so any of you familiar with my vacuum demonstrations will know the sort of thing that this dirt consists of. So basically it's recycled dirt from many different vacuum cleaner demonstrations. So I've got a lot of different sort of particles in here to test the Hoover Blaze on. So a lot of the things you can see, these white bits, little bits of white paper, there's some dust, there's some rice left from another demonstration. There's Fibres from a rug, there is pet hair mixed in with here. All this is uh, golden retriever hair, there's some probably some dashing hair as well in here. And generally, this is a right old mess. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass the Hoover Blaze forward and back through the middle just to see how effective it is at cleaning. Again, I've decided to put it on position one, which is the setting that Hoover recommend for the best performance. Okay then, here goes. A bit noisy but it's not done a bad job. Now Hoover are claiming an A rating for carpet cleaning performance on the energy label that's supplied with this machine but that is just for dust pickup. It doesn't, obviously it has picked up all the dust in this but it has left a little line here which I like to call my line of shame. That line is left by a lot of vacuum cleaners, a lot of upright vacuum cleaners that are belt driven because there is always underneath in most cases there's a little part where the belt is and there's a guard over it so there's no brush to brush that part of the carpet but as you're normally vacuuming obviously you'll overlap the, stro overlap the strokes and you'll be able to pick that up but the area where the brushes have groomed the carpet it's done a very good job actually not too bad at all I did find it rather difficult it was a bit hard to push on this it's not it is a fairly short pile carpet but I think to clean up the rest of this dirt I'm going to select setting 2. Obviously if you get this machine you'll find that various settings might work better for your particular carpets or flooring. Okay well I've still got rather a lot of mess either side here so we'll see if the Hoover Blaze will manage to pick up the remaining dirt.
think the Hoover Blaze does deserve its A rating for carpet cleaning performance and if you like a lot of lines in your carpet, if you like that groomed look, then it does very well. If I just move to one side, that's an area that I haven't been over with the Hoover Blaze. This is the area that I have cleaned. Go as close as I can without it going out of focus. But yes, it does a, a good job. One proviso, I suggest you experiment with various settings. I did find setting one, the machine was a little bit hard to push on this particular carpet. So if you find that, I suggest you go up to setting two, see how that is. If it's still hard to push on two, then see what it's like on setting three. Okay, well, I think it's A+. Plus. My opinion, five out of five for carpet cleaning. Let's take the Hoover Blaze downstairs now and see how it deals with my kitchen floor. Okay, well I've come into the kitchen now and basically emptied some of the contents of the dirt bin back onto the floor. And for this demonstration, I'm not using on setting one the machine. I've decided to put it on setting two, which Hoover recommend for delicate floor surfaces. Because of the two squeegees underneath, the brushes hopefully won't be touching the floor because they can, especially with dirt like this, they could scratch the floor. So hopefully it won't snow plow all the dirt either. Now I'm not a fan of using uprights on hard floors. I'd rather use a cylinder vacuum cleaner or even a broom than an upright with a revolving brush. If you've got an upright where you can turn the brush off, that's a little bit better, but you still can risk scratching delicate floor surfaces. Anyway, I've got it on setting two. It will be much louder, I think, in the kitchen because there's less soft furnishings to absorb the noise. Incidentally, Hoover claim this is an 89 decibel noise level, which sounds a lot, but in use, certainly on carpets, it doesn't sound too bad, but I think on this kitchen floor, it might sound quite loud. So here we go. Forward and back through the middle of this dirt. Hoover claim a B rating for dust pickup from floors. Now, as far as the dust pickup goes, it has picked up most of the dust, I have to say, and it didn't snow plow quite as much as I thought it might, but obviously on the back pass, you can see where it's left all this dirt. Obviously, this is quite extreme. In your home, you shouldn't have this sort of dirt to deal with, but, mm, it's fair to middling. Now, what I'm just going to do, as I said, experiment with the settings. I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go up to setting four and just pass it over a few more times and just see if raising the nozzle just a little bit more will prevent any dust from being pushed at the front of the nozzle. So here goes. hear that or even see it oh, it's not scratched it now I'm not going to continue using this upright on this floor it hasn't scratched it but it will rub out it's a, it's it's um Contico I think they call it this floor it's a very robust floor this they use it in contract situations so it's not what I would call a delicate floor surface but I just can't stand that scraping, scratching noise you get when you're using this sort of vacuum on a hard floor. And I'm not going to continue to pick up the rest of this using the Hoover Blaze. I'm going to get a cylinder vacuum out to clean this up after the demonstration. So four floors, as I say, Hoover rated a B for dust pickup on hard floors. And I suppose if I was just to put dust down on the floor, it would earn that rating in my eyes, but of course, you don't just drop dust onto your floors, do you? Okay, so we've seen the performance on hard floors and carpets. Now I'm going to go up the stairs and see if the Hoover Blaze will reach up a standard flight 
of 13 steps. Now, if we look at this symbol on the cleaning head of the Hoover Blaze, it is claiming 13 full stair cleaning. So obviously I don't take any notice of claims. I won't believe them until I've tested them for myself. So we'll see if the hose does indeed stretch up 13 steps. As you can see, the long hose is stored on the machine, but it's not actually used when the machine's in upright mode. No dirt passes through the hose because it's not actually connected to the machine. You do need to connect it yourself, so you have to remove it from the storage area, like that. And then, if you look at the side here, there's a shorter hose. Now you need to remove that short hose by squeezing these two tabs here like this and then the hose just drops down, so you just leave it like that. And then in place of the short hose, you need to fix the longer hose, and it just clips into place, just like that. So once you have the hose connected to the machine, you've got the free end here to enable you to attach any of the accessories that you want to use. So you can attach them directly to the end of the hose like this. So we've got the extra long crevice tool, useful for doing down the sides of the stairs or down the side of your sofa, in your car, etc. You can attach the extension wand if you don't want to bend down or you want to reach up somewhere high. And onto the end of the extension wand, you can attach any of the nozzles, whether it be the two-in-one dusting tool, the crevice tool, or the pet hair remover. Now, I prefer not to use an extension wand when I'm cleaning stairs. So to see if the machine will reach, I'm not using the extension wand. I'm going to put the pet hair remover directly onto the end of the hose. And then I'm going to stretch right up to the top of the stairs and see how effectively I can clean with the machine at the bottom of the stairs. So with the Hoover Blaze safely at the bottom of the stairs, I'm just going to go up and see how far I can get without having to tug on the hose. Well, I can confirm the top, if you can still hear me, the top landing, this would be the 13th step. And I can indeed easily clean 13 steps. In fact, that, that goes much, much beyond 13 stairs. So if you have more stairs in your home, I think that would go up to 15, 16 steps. It's a very long hose. I'm quite impressed with the stair cleaning ability of this vacuum. But, of course, I haven't turned the vacuum cleaner on. And often, with hoses like this, that stretch, when you've actually got the machine on, and you block the end off as you're cleaning, the force of the suction retracts the hose, and it can make it difficult. So what I'm going to do, and also using a turbo nozzle does make the retraction even worse, but I still want to try out the turbo nozzle on the stairs, the speed of it might reduce as I extend the hose to its fullest extent because the suction has further to travel and the more you extend the hose, the suction does reduce slightly at the cleaner head. Okay, I'm going to switch the machine on and go back up the stairs and just clean a few steps at the top just to see if it's going to fight with me or it's going to let me clean the stairs effectively. So I'm going to switch on the machine and then go right to the top. It will make quite a bit of noise, I expect. pretty impressed with that. I was able to clean right at the top, it wasn't pulling back on the hose, the turbo brush was still rotating at a fast speed and it was doing, doing a good job. So all in all, I think for stair cleaning, this is a very good machine to go for. That just about concludes my demonstration and review of the Hoover Blaze Bagless Upright Vacuum Cleaner. My conclusions, is it a thumbs up or is it a thumbs down? Well, I think in this instance, for the price, it's a thumbs up. It's a good value cleaner, providing you buy this machine 
for around 70, 80 pounds, I would class it as good value. Anything over 100, then I would probably consider going for another machine. It excels at general carpet cleaning, does get an A rating, and it does a very good job of grooming the pile. As I said in the review, you do need to experiment with the settings to find one that suits you, gives you the best performance, and it also makes it easier to push. But at least you have the option of being able to change the height. Some vacuum cleaners, they have a floating head and you're stuck with it, so you can't raise it if you need to clean lightweight rugs or deep pile carpets. So having a manual height adjustment is a good idea in my opinion. It's fair on hard floors. It didn't do very well on the dirt I put down, but for general dust and debris on the hard floor, it'll be okay. But as I said, I don't particularly like using an upright on a hard floor. Better just to sweep it or use, if you have a cylinder cleaner, use that on your hard floors. It's very good on stairs, despite the fact you do have to attach the hose. It's not permanently attached. You do have to unclip the small hose and attach this longer hose. But it does a very good job and it's a very, very long, it's one of the longest stair cleaning hoses I've seen. Some do claim 13 stair clean, but I find you're sort of struggling towards the top of the staircase. This one, there was no struggling to get to the top, and there was plenty of hose left to spare. So this is a, a definite plus point. And also the pet hair remover worked well, even when the hose was extended right to the top. So all in all, it's a good value basic upright vacuum cleaner. Just has a year's guarantee, so be aware of that. One thing also be aware of is the filter maintenance. Now, I showed you how to clean the filter earlier on. I don't want to open it now because that filter will be quite dirty. No, I will, I will for the sake of consumer journalism. Well, it's not quite as bad as I was expecting it to be. Now you saw all the dirt that it's picked up today, but obviously that does need cleaning now. So I could clean that by taking it outside and giving it a good tap. But obviously the dirt I've picked up in this demo would represent a few weeks worth of dirt in the average home. So maybe after two or three weeks, you might find your filter looking like that. Don't leave it. Do these steps I've shown you how to do them, just take the filter off, tap it at least if you don't want to wash it. And I don't recommend washing it too often, obviously you still have to wait for it to dry, it's a bit inconvenient, but at least remove the filter, give it a good tap outside, get as much of the dust off and then put it back in the machine. If you keep the filter clean, the machine will be able to breathe, the airflow will go through, you won't have any overheating and the machine will last longer. A lot of vacuum cleaners fail because people do not maintain the filter. If you want to spend more money, if you have, if you definitely want bagless and you need, you have a little bit more money to spend, I suggest looking at a multi-cyclonic vacuum. In general, they tend to keep the filters much cleaner for longer, especially if you go at the higher end, if you go for a Dyson, then they are the best at filtering out the dirt before they get to the filter. But there are some very good machines from Vax and Hoover, slightly up the range, do some good machines as well with multi-cyclonic filtration. So, apart from the maintenance, apart from the fairly mediocre hard floor cleaning, it's not too noisy, it's quite lightweight, and if your main concern is carpet cleaning, sorry about that, get back into shot, if your main concern is carpet cleaning, pet hair removal, then it's one I would consider, but if you can try it out in the shop, you know, you can have a go with it in the shop, all the best. If you can't, then you'll just have to take my word for it, I'm afraid. But I think pick it up for about £70, it's good value.